Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this um special edition of Long Island Railroad. Tonight, we're gonna focus on one single person. And <clears throat> there's people that are wondering who is behind of all these delays, derailments, temporary platforms at Woodside, Forest Hills, and Kew Gardens? Well, we have your answer right here. Let me present to you Elisa Pika. Elisa Pika is the executive vice president of Long Island Railroad. And she is responsible of the following. Capital planning, service planning, marketing, public affairs, as well as procurement and logistics. <clears throat> but let's focus more on service planning. Obviously, because of this person who has 30 years in the Long Island Railroad, <clears throat> we could say it's time for her to take up the gloves and resign. Because of course, because of her and the poor planning, we have to de we have to deal with over twenty with over twelve hour wait to be explained or in other words notified about a derailment that happened uh, last month in the West Side Yard that because of this person, we didn't get notified until Sunday. So, and also she is in charge of Isaias, the double track, the third track on the main line, But what focused me more is this paragraph right here. When she thinks back how she arrived at her, at her current position, she moves that to, it was very tall, very hard work and the support of many people who supported her along the way. In particular, she, has, she expresses her appreciation of the leadership and quote-unquote guidance of the disgrace, the biggest snob ever, Patrick Nowakowski. 2017 recipient of the W. TFGNY Ray LaHood Award. Bleh. He doesn't even deserve that. He doesn't even deserve anything at all.
of course, <clears throat> this person right here, Elisa Pica, has to resign. Because we need better servers and not having the Babylon branch privilege. <clears throat> we don't need another snob ruining servers along the other branches of the Long Island Railroad. That basically every day thousands of commuters like Matt Camper have to deal with issues in the East River Tunnels, issues at Woodside, issues at Jamaica, Hicksville, Mineola, uh, New High Park, etc., 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 and having temporary platforms at Woodside, Forest Hills, and Kew Gardens. <clears throat> and we're gonna open Google Maps. And we're going to have it on transit mode. And we're going we're gonna to navigate through here. Okay, let's go more towards <clears throat> Here, Four Hills. This is Four Hills 71st Avenue on the E, F, M, and R trains. And here's Four Hills on the Long Island Railroad. It's literally a block away. <clears throat> of course, if you walk along 71st Avenue onto Austin Street, and the station is right there. The second one, Hugh Gardens, Union Turnpike. <clears throat> well, <coughs> the next station will be Kew Gardens. Here's Kew Gardens Union Turnpike on the E and F. And here's Kew Gardens on the Logan and Railroad. And of course, it is pretty, pretty much accessible if <clears throat> it's like a five minute, let's say a five minute walk by uh, Kew Gardens Road, 80th Road, and Austin Street. Or Yeah. <clears throat> 
See, you guys could take the Q10 bus from Q Garden Subway to Q Gardens on the Long Island Railroad. It will leave you right there at Austin Street and Mowbray Drive. <clears throat> it doesn't cost anything to have New York City Transit to cross on. In order to have the Long Island Railroad bypass Kew Gardens, Forest Hills, and wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, Woodside. <coughs> Well, at least between Penn Station and Jamaica, you <clears throat> between my mistakes between Woodside and Penn Station, you have the Q32 bus that serves Penn Station and Woodside. And also, <clears throat> you have the seven. And this station is heavily used when there is sport, when there is games right up here. <clears throat> City Field or to the upcoming US Open tournament that will be here and here. <clears throat> And if the, o the only way to get there is using the Port Washington branch. But at least in the Port Washington branch, there's no stops between Woodside and Metzvinus Point. <coughs> but most of the people use the seven to access Metzvinus Point, to access uh, City Field because you don't have to walk on the broad walk. But if you come points east of uh, City Field, then you have to rely on the Port Washington branch. And as you guys know, doing Mets games, home games, we should be more specific. <clears throat> the seven has sup seven super express service. That means making all express stops except Junction Boulevard, 94th Street. But stopping at Woodside, because Woodside is a major, let's say, an intermodal transit destination that connects the 7 and the Logan Railroad. But of course, because of this person, Elisa Pika, we have to deal with the bracketcy of having temporary platforms 
in the stations previously mentioned. And speaking of which, we're going to check uh, <clears throat> if there's uh, any delays to report. At least on, on the subway side, uh, northbound, let's say Bronxbound, six trains are running with delays because of a passenger requiring medical attention at 125th Street. <clears throat> also, Brooklyn bound A and C trains are running with delays because of a signal problem between 14th Street and West 4th Street. And also, there's the delays on the Canarsie bound L trains because of a signal problems at Sutter Avenue. And as a reminder, all this weekend, there is no L train service between Broadway Junction, Fulton Street, and 8th Avenue. As an alternative, Use the special Weekend M that will operate between Middle Village and 96th Street, 2nd Avenue. And free shuttle buses will operate between Broadway Junction, Fulton Street, Motor Wyckoff, Motor Wyckoff, and Lorimer. In the um, Loop species between Lormer, Bedford, Marcy, Hughes, and Broadway. For service between Manhattan and Brooklyn, please use the A, J, N, and R, M. <coughs> but if you guys wonder, is this the only weekend that the L will be shut down? Mm. Bas basically, <coughs> Everything is up to this. Starting at the end of April 2019 to July 2020, L trains will run only in Brooklyn between Bedford Avenue and Canarsie. And also, they do they will do work at 14th Street Union Square. There will be free transfers between Broadway and Hughes, Broadway and Laura, Juniors and Livonia, and 21st Street and Hunters Point Avenue. Uh, Interborough Southern Bus Service, L1 SBS, that will be operating between Grand Street, Brooklyn, and First Avenue. L2 SBS, that will be from Grand Street, Brooklyn, to the Broadway Lafayette Street, Leaker Street area. <coughs> L3 SBS, that will be from Bedford Avenue to Broadway Lafayette, Bleecker Street area. The L4 SBS, that will be from Bedford to First Avenue. 
late night L fourteen as we as during the weekend. <coughs> How the bus stops are going to be in the Southern Italy area? The bus priority area, the 14th Street Busway, the Williamsburg Bridge HOV 3 plus hours. How the Lancy Street is going to be, Allen Street, Camp Meyer. Houston, 14th Street Corridor. Uh, as part of the package, <coughs> the M14 select buster will be as a testing mode. Double one from 10th Avenue all the way to uh, 20th Street and Avenue C. Connecting with the Stuyvesant Cove Ferry Terminal, and it will be a free transfer with. Let's make it clear with an SBS ticket. The ferry will be from 20th Street to Williamsburg, and this will be the the weekend of uh, preparation. We have weekend one. The following round will be all weekends in October, and then. In November, then and then no suspensions in December and in January, and then we have February, all weeks and all weekends in February, and then all weekends in March except the last weekend and the middle of April. <clears throat> At least this weekend, the service is suspended between Manhattan and Broadway Junction. Or it could happen the case that could be from um, Myrtle Wyckoff. If it happens the case that, um, <clears throat> let's say the weekend of October 6th and the 7th, there's L trains are not running between Manhattan and Myrtle Wyckoff. That will provide a direct connection with the M. Without relying on free shuttle buses. Only those between Bedford Avenue and Myrtle Wyckoff will depend on shuttle buses to either connecting to Marcy, Hughes, and Lorimer and Broadway on the G or Metropolitan Avenue on the G. And of course, let's go to let's go to the how the service is going to be for 15 months.
No L trade between Manhattan and Brooklyn. Additional service on the JDM. Additional service on Nathan trains on the G. Nathan trains on the C. And we are seeing that already as the broader part of the subway action plan. We will have 24-7 M service, but night, overnight and weekends will be running to 96th Street, 2nd Avenue. And of course, the free auto system transfer between Livonia and Junius, between Broadway and Hughes and Lorimer, and 21st Street and Hunters Point. We have our station capacities improvements. Um, we have Marcy Avenue widened street stairs, additional turnstile capacity. On Lormer Street, additional turnstile capacity. On Broadway Junction, Eastern Parkway, and Fulton Street, additional stairs at JZ platforms connected to the L. At Court Square, uh, additional stairs at G. G platform improved capacity at two control areas. Nassau Avenue con additional turnstile capacity. Uh, Metropolitan and Lorimer. Uh, new platform to mezzanine stairs to improve to two control areas. We open entrances of uh, Flushing Avenue and Fayette Street, completed in July 2017. Um, Metropolitan Avenue, Power Street, and Hill Street. And of course, as we mentioned, uh, all the the three uh, interborough services between Brooklyn and Manhattan, the M14 SBS, that according to Peter Cafiero the Director of Operations Planning for New York City Transit. This will be as a, a test. If it's a success, 14th Street will be next to have select bus service in the cross town streets in Manhattan. And, and of course, the, the new Stuyvesant Cove at 20th Street will be the terminus of the M40 SBS and it will connect with the M23 Salad Bus Server that terminates there also. And this is the work that needs to be done. They have to rebuild, in other words, reconstruct concrete dot back. And we're talking about over 30,000 feet. Almost 7,000 feet of discharge pipe. Over 126,000 feet of cable. 
38 emergency alarms, 176 feet of cable, signals, 3 miles of track, 7,110 feet of concrete, uh, concrete liner, 271,500 2, feet of cable ducts and 15,800 feet of third rail and 14,400 feet on tracks. But of course, First Avenue will be let's say uh, the Avenue A entrance at First Avenue will won't have cross over and cross under. So, it looks like during the El the Canarsie Tunnel Rehabilitation, we're going to have a species of uh, the Enhanced Station Initiative, but not to that extent. But of course, 6th Avenue. If anybody visits that station, it is a disgrace. It is. But there's something that people don't know about. See if we could turn the map uh, this way. Okay, here we go. Hey, this is 14th Street. We're going to focus between 7th and 8th Avenues. This is the 8th Avenue line, and this is the 7th Avenue, the Broadway. Seven family lines. Between here and here, there's a passageway. That you can see in easily from the Broadway Seven Family side. But from the Eight Family side, when you go down the ramp, you can see a little spacing right there. Could you imagine connecting 6th Avenue with 7th Avenue and 8th Avenue? That would be quite interesting. But Returning to Elisa Pico, the question will be the following. Should Elisa Pico resign? Yes or no? And please feel free to post comments on the comment area of this video. That will be 
very, very appreciate. And remember to follow me on social media. It's my Twitter page, Jason Yes. 0619 and also follow Matt Camper on Twitter and also follow our friend and the also on Twitter. All of us, we're making a team, a team that's getting bigger and bigger every single day. So please, let's get together and tell Phil Ang, Joe Lola, and Governor Andrew Mark Cuomo to fire Elisa Pica as soon as possible because we don't need people as Elisa Pica disturbing Philip Ang's work. Because according to this information, of course, she grew up in Long Island. And We are facing hard times having this person at service, service planning. Let's demand her resignation or else. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that we've spread the word out about this person who is, as we speak, the rotten apple on the Long Island Railroad. So thank you for watching, we'll see you next time.